أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم There's three explicit statements of Jesus that says he's not God, of Jesus. So Jesus says to Mary, go tell my disciples, I go now to my father and your father, my God and your God. Okay, so at this point Jesus is saying what? He's going to his father, who is our father, so we've got the same father, his God, our God. Wait a minute, what's Jesus saying here? So Jesus is saying now that he's ascending to God, the Father. He's already told us the Father's the only true God. And when Jesus is said, oh, in the, I think it's in Matthew, it says, the, the young man says, oh, good teacher. What does he say? I say I'm good. Only God is good. So we have three explicit statements of Jesus where he's differentiating himself from God. Where he's explicitly saying, the Father's the only true God. I go now to God. And why call him me good? Only God is good. Yeah? So these are what we call explicit statements. And going back to what I was saying earlier. So when you hear, before Abraham was, I am. Yeah? So, this is another lexical ambiguity. Because it could mean more than one thing. It could mean, I am before Abraham. I, mean, I existed before Abraham. It could mean that. Or it could mean, I am is the name of God, apparently. So, when he's being asked, how do you know these things? And he basically says, before Abraham was God. And he's basically saying, I'm a, I'm a messenger of God. So God would know these things and I'm conveying these things God has told me to convey. So there's different ways of understanding the same verse. Now, is it he's saying he's God or is it him saying God told him? So these are the two ways you can understand the sentence. When you apply lexical ambiguity, we look for extra information. When we see Jesus saying the Father is only true God, that means Jesus, again, he's saying he's not God. So he can't be referring to the idea that he's God. So he must be saying he's a messenger of God at this point. You've got to start when you read the Bible. You've got to recognize ambiguous statements that may mean more than one thing. And I'll tell you where this information for me has come from. I've uh, been researching Unitarian Christians. These are Christians who don't believe in the idea that Jesus was God. Don't believe in the idea of a trinity. And they show me the same verses that a Trinitarian Christian would use to support the idea that Jesus is God. So they'll bring I and the Father I want as an evidence. And this Unitarian Christian say, well actually no, it means this. Uh, they'll show me before Abraham was I am. And then this Unitarian Christian will show me no, well it actually means this. But you've got two choices. Now this is not coming from an Islamic perspective, anything like that. It's from a human perspective, you're reading the language, you're seeing a sentence that could mean more than one thing. You have to put your bias aside and ask yourself, what could this mean? Because what's happening is you're coming across an ambiguous statement and the interpretation of that ambiguous statement goes against explicit statements and you're building theology upon this. And this is disaster, disastrous. So this is in a, this is seven one yeah? yeah. Yahweh so said, see Moses to God Elohim. Moses, yeah. If you make this, so Moses Elohim is for Moses. Can you see the interlinear Hebrew translated as Elohim, which is translated as God about Mo Moses? Moses is not more than one, is he? Because you made a choice. No, no, you make it. Says, no, as? Yeah, 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 yeah. God. But you said Elohim. No, 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 but you said when the word Elohim is used, it's always more than one. You said. And Elohim is used for Moses. And he's only one, and not only more than one. one. Okay, so you Therefore, have... your understanding of the word Elohim is incorrect. Yeah. But you see, now only. Do you accept that? that? Good. So you learn something today. At least you learn one thing. Yeah. You are proving <laughs> that there is only one God. We are yeah. proving that that it is not Jesus Christ. And we we are all the same, one God. But we believe in three. No, but that's the problem. No, it means it's problem for you. No, that. Not, uh, uh, no, but it's not problem for us. It is. But why is painful for you what we believe? No, no. I tell you why. I tell you why it's painful for us. Because <laughs> you only believe what you believe because of where you were born. Okay, this is not something that you have come to the conclusion yourself. This is just how you were brought up, you believe it's true, and you're living it because you think it's true. That doesn't make it true. We are believing something alternate to you. Okay, 
Our beliefs can't both be true. Now we care about truth. You should care about truth also. Both of our beliefs cannot be true. Yeah? We've got a problem between our beliefs. All beliefs. There's no religion that can be reconciled. So all religions, only one can be true or they're all false. Yeah? There's no two religions that can be true. Because each contradicts another. And we can't have square triangles. So you can't have Jesus being God and then a religion saying Jesus isn't God or part of God. One of them is wrong. Agreed? How can you prove Basic principle. So, for example, yeah, you, it's been yeah. Now, yeah. now is just situation. Then you try to prove your truth no, no. to us. No, And we're standing. We're not trying. We, we are not trying to prove anything to you. We've not invited you to this slum right now. What we're doing is asking you what you believe and why. Now, your beliefs. So, your conclusion to what you believe, your premises don't support it. Your reasons why you believe and don't make sense. Yeah. So if, if you believe Jesus is one part of a co-equal trinity, yet Jesus himself says in your scripture that the Father is the only true God, that means there can only be one true God, which is the Father. What we're asking you as a Christian, when you read that explicit statement, why are you ignoring it? Why are you ignoring that and going to a statement, I and the Father are one before Abraham was I am, which is, like I said earlier, a lexical ambiguity. Why are you going to ambiguous verses that could mean more than one thing and selecting the, not you selecting it, but following the interpretation that suits your narrative? Yeah? You've got to be honest. You've got to say, well, this can't mean what they're saying it means. And if it doesn't mean this, what does it mean? And what else am I reading? thinking it means such a thing when it doesn't. So for example, the young lady here, she thought when she sees Elohim, it only applies to God and it always means more than one. Therefore, God is more than one, comprised of more than one. She's learned today that Moses is referred to as Elohim and Moses is only one guy. Therefore, it doesn't always apply to that. So it's something new you learn. And what happens in life when you learn new things, you apply it. Yeah, you can't just stay blinkered. Yeah, and I have to be like, you're good people. You're really good people. And you know, there's a reason why you're here why? today. Because you look at us and you can say that we are. Yeah, you know, you know the people, how many people we speak to here who are obnoxious, who, who are horrible to speak to? Honestly, and I can see you've got manners, you're courteous. I can see your thinking, and I like the way you question, show me. I like that. This, this is what we call reason. But when you reason and you see a conclusion, you say, I was wrong. And once you're wrong about something, you have to ask a simple we, question. We, the, the purpose we came here was to meet some people. You've been here since the morning. Yeah. Maybe I this is God's sign. I've seen you stood here at 11 o'clock. Yeah. And maybe this is a sign from God that you interact with Muslims and you learn about things maybe that something you've erroneously believed because of culture, because of your upbringing. Yeah. You know the amazing thing This is? could be a sign from but, God. But do you know what's amazing? I've seen you at 11 o'clock today. Yeah, I seen you, and I thought, should I speak to her? Because like, really? feels a little bit forward. Really we'll look really to her. Hello, I'm going to chat. It feels really forward. Now we were there with our cameras, and there's nobody here. I mean, like, what do we do? And look, at the end of the day, I was nearly gone. We've got a chance to speak to you. So I was meant to speak to you, even though it didn't happen earlier. Mashallah, it's happened now. But you've got to reflect upon this. You've got to think about what's been said to you. Forget we're Muslims, because what we've said to you today has got nothing to do with Islam. We've not brought to you the Quran or the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said about the Bible. We've not mentioned nothing. Like this, all we're asking you as Christians to do is you're holding a position which isn't tenable. Yeah, you can't hold the position Jesus is God if Jesus says he isn't. If Jesus says the Father is the only true God, um, but understand one thing, and um, this is the warning this is just the beginning. Once you start pulling the string, we'll all unravel, really will, and you, 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 you will end up walking away from Christianity. I'm not saying to become a Muslim or anything like that, you will walk away from it. So this can't be true. Because and then when you, like, for example, you read the KJV, yeah? why? Why is that the Bible you read? Don't you know it contains forgery? Literally forgery? Verses that are not found in the early manuscripts that have been added later on? Do, do, are you aware of this or not? I know one thing. What do you know? That God changed my life. Alhamdulillah. But guess what? Can you say God changing your life means what you believe is true? Because God changed my life. No, but here's the thing. Alhamdulillah. So here's the thing you see. You saying an evidence for you, God changing your life, means Christianity is true. Fair enough? Right. I'm a Muslim. I've been a Muslim 21 years. I accepted Islam when I was 27. Islam changed my life. Does that make it true? No, no, no. I'm interested in relative truth. I'm interested in ultimate truth. Because the answer has to be from you. No. 
Because if my truth is true, yours is false. If your truth is true, mine is false. One of us hasn't got the truth here. And yet, both of our lives have been changed because of our truths. Yeah? So, using you, oh, it changed my life, doesn't prove anything. It cannot be used as a criterion to determine what truth is. The only way you can determine what truth is, is what do I believe and why? Rather than just accepting what you're being told, question what you're being told. Who told me this? Why is this? You know, start asking these questions. Why, why does this Bible have verses that have been removed from this Bible? Why? Isn't it all the Word of God? What happened? I'm going to ask you three questions, right? And I guarantee you pretty much you're going to say yes to three of them. All right, let's see. Do you believe the authors of the Gospels were inspired by God? Authors of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Do you believe they were inspired by God? Yes. Yes. What do you say? Yes. Do you believe the authors of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, was written by disciples of Jesus? Not all of them. Which ones weren't? Do you agree? Uh, sorry? Why not? That's okay. Okay. Which ones are not? Who? It's me and I just need to go and Mark and Luke. There was no disciples called Mark and Luke. The problem you have is Matthew copied from Mark. So if Mark's not a disciple of Jesus, why would Matthew be a disciple of Jesus copying from Mark? It made no sense. But you believe that they were Matthew and John, yeah? That they were they were disciples of Jesus. And do you believe that the authors of these gospels were eyewitnesses to what they wrote? I believe. Of course you do. So you pretty much answered yes, 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 like I, I believed you would. <laughs> now this is what we, this is, this, these are your premises to support your conclusion. So if what you're saying is true, it will make total sense to believe it. Well, these guys, Jesus chose to walk with him. These guys witnessed the life of Jesus, witnessed his miracles, witnessed his parables, heard the explanations to his parables, were there on the day of Pentecost filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow, yeah, yeah. And the Holy Spirit inspired them to write and correct them if they made, didn't made any mistakes. Yeah, of course I believe what it says. I agree. That, that would give you a uh, justified reason to believe what the New Testament, what the Gospels say. Yeah? Fair? The problem you have is, there's no support for the idea that the authors of the Gospels were inspired by the Holy Spirit. None of the writers of the Gospels made such a claim. That's a claim put upon them by other people. They didn't make a claim, first thing. Second thing, according to biblical scholars, the authors of the Gospels are anonymous. You don't even know who wrote them. This is biblical scholars, yeah? Your biblical scholars, New Testament scholars. You don't know who authored Mark, who authored Mark, who authored Luke, who authored John. You don't actually know who they were. And if you don't know who wrote something, you certainly can't say they were eyewitnesses. But you don't know who they were. So the problem you have is the three premises that hold up your reliance of the New Testament are actually false premises when you actually look at them. And when you realize that, so what I'm reading here now isn't written by people who witnessed it, isn't written by people who claim to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Why do I believe it's true? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Because as my friend, there is spiritual eyes and there is flesh. If we born again have the spirit and we see with the spiritual eyes, we see the deepness of that. And we need the Holy Spirit. And for you, it's fair enough. I'm going to make a claim to you now. No, no, it's not, not for you. To Why do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Because it's serene. When have you ever seen it in action? Give me an example of the Holy Spirit doing its work. Where? 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 Is the Holy Spirit with the Catholics or the, or the Protestants? I'm not Catholic. No, we know you're not Catholic. So, so who, who is the Holy Spirit with? With the Catholics or, or with the Protestants? You? Or the Orthodox, who has or the, the Egyptian Copts. Unfortunately, we need to leave. <laughs> right. no we have to go as well on Frey Mahalib. Okay. Well, just, let me just leave you with that to think about, please. And promise me to do so. Can I say one? one go on. Thing? Yes. If you look around and you see what is going on in the world, madness. And if we come back here 
like let's say 10, 20 years Muhammad time. It's only that power of the Holy Spirit's power which will keep your mind stable. That's nonsense. And you can. We will come back That's and see. That's nonsense. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to make the claim to you now. Because okay. people yes, are in, in the hospitals. And now the thing which makes you feel like, oh, I know something. It can go in two seconds. And then you are just like... I'll down. say that again to you. The evidence on the New Testament the evidence from Christianity, there is no Holy Spirit. It doesn't do what it says on the tin. The Holy Spirit is supposed to lead you into all truth, and the Holy Spirit is supposed to guide you and correct you. The Holy Spirit doesn't correct the Gospel writers. The Holy Spirit doesn't correct Paul and the disciples who's right and who's wrong. The denomination of Christianity, like my brother said to you, Catholics, have they got the Holy Spirit? Protestants, have they got it? Jehovah's Witnesses, have they got it? Who's got it? You can't all have it because you believe different things. So who has the Holy Spirit? And the problem you have is, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you have different Bibles. Which one, which one has the Holy Spirit? The Church Fathers, did they have the Holy Spirit? Because the problem is this, the Holy Spirit is supposed, the Holy Spirit is supposed to do a job. Yeah? Correct, harmonize, lead you into truth. And all you see in Christianity is division and confusion. Nobody knows what's true and what's not. Unitarian Christians challenge Trinitarian Christians on verses of the Bible. They don't agree on that. Where's the Holy Spirit in all this? Why is he not doing his job? Why, when there's historical errors made in the New Testament, in the Gospels, why is the Holy Spirit not correcting the author? Why is he allowing the mistakes to continue? Why is he allowing the fabrications to occur? What's, what's, the Holy Spirit is doing nothing. So either the Holy Spirit is redundant, or well, doesn't exist. Now, I'm saying to you, I'm not saying absence of evidence is evidence of absence, but if the Holy Spirit existed, we should see it in action. Now, here's the thing I do see. I see Christians here, writing, raving, singing, dancing, it's manic. And they claim that's the Holy Spirit. Nothing holy about it. When I see these churches and they're all, and all this, that doesn't look very holy to me. <laughs> right, right, right. But this is the, but people claim this is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit come down in, right? And so this is the thing. You're, you're, you're trying to live reality based on things you've been taught, but don't support it. And you have what's called the placebo effect. Where because you think something's true, you see something and you, oh, it could be that. Yeah. All I want you to do is listen to the claim I've made. There's one claim, all you need to challenge today. Go away, wherever you're going. What that crazy guy said in the farm. Is it true the authors of the Gospels were anonymous? Is it true they were not eyewitnesses to what they wrote? Is it true there was no claim of divine inspiration? And if it's true, and if it's true, and if it's true, why do I believe it? Check out my channel. Can I give you my channel name? My YouTube channel. Can you write it down? Yeah, have you got pen and paper? You look like you've got pen and paper. Oh, come on. You are not too Um. How can I do it? Have you got like a notepad on your phone or something? I'm not trying to get your number or anything like that. Because right? I want you to respond. I oh, know, I really do. I want you both to respond to what I've said to you. Because we're trying to establish what's true here. We'll meet again. Inshallah. Yeah. We'll meet again. And you've got the Quran. Read it. Yeah, no, see what it has to say about you. Your friend, one of the friends. Yeah, yeah. Quran. Read the Quran. And you see. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm with you. I need to Shall I write it in the Quran? Where's the Quran? Have you got a paper? I need to know. Yeah, yeah. Because when you are told, this means I can, I can tell what is written in my book. Yeah. So we can talk Quran. about it. So read yeah, the Quran, and we'll get some questions, yeah. and, and, and come back to us. Yeah, inshallah. I apologize for that Christian interjection earlier because that was very rude, the way he was no, shouting. It's been, you see, we started to talk very, very in silence and all of you came and you just I didn't I didn't shout push. did I? Uh, yeah, I didn't you, you raised voice no. so like yes, him, I did, yes, not, not yes, yes, yes. and it's been I'll, I'll put my like, email as well yeah and you see what is interesting that we came with the same opinion and we're living with the same opinion no you're not because we already found no you're not no you're not she's changed her opinion does Elohim me always mean plural yes who well, doesn't because Moses was a plural <laughs> but that doesn't change the, uh, the fact that you Elohim see, means well, more than one. Well, it doesn't because Mo was Moses more than one? No, was Moses more than one? I think what you should do is reflect on what we've said. Just try to recollect what you've said in terms of the scripture verses that you've used and the counter responses that we've provided. I can tell you that I am not ready to respond to your questions. I know, I know. that doesn't change what I might Have an open mind. Have an open mind yes. and see, because when you 
believe in Islam, one thing for sure will happen to you. You will get contentment and tranquility in the hearts. Because the Quran says so. Do not the heart find satisfaction in the remembrance of God and the of Allah. This is one thing you'll notice. When you accept Islam, you, your experience will such that you'll have tranquility, peace, serenity. You'll have, you have, you have all of that. I want responses. Because at, the, at this minute, don't teach your pastors, priests. Because at this minute, what you have heard is Jesus cannot be God, and you know it makes sense. Jesus cannot be God because he is not so sufficient. Jesus cannot be God because he says the only Father is the only true God. So the peace that you had about Jesus is God. Is on the back. It's no longer there because now you are in a. Yeah. Is Jesus still God? What's your name? After all that we've spoken? Anastasia. Okay, I'm a Hamza. So after all the reasons we've given you, you still think he's God? Very nice to meet you. He has a son, he has a father. He has a father, he has a son. And thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. All the rest, you take care. That's okay. We will come. Yeah, we'll, we'll speak again. Anastasia's got my email. Take care. I, I want a response. Yeah. I, w I want you to tell me why I'm wrong Just or what I said. And if you go to Hamza's den, I think we'll probably have the video up. Yeah, yeah, we can take the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out, yeah? Take care, ladies.